Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. It says, For the remarkable, undeserved grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. We covered just this verse on Sunday. So, when you gave your life to Christ, or rather, before you gave your life to Christ, he appeared to you, the grace appeared. Remember, I said that God is not doing anything anymore. God, every grace you need, he has given it. The grace have appeared to all men. That brings salvation and appeared to all men. So what will you do with the grace? You receive the grace for what? For salvation. Put the next verse. And how do we do that? Romans, you see, 8, 10, 9, 10, and 11. Somewhere in Romans. He says, with the heart, man confess unto, with the, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That is how you walk accordingly to the grace for salvation. The grace for salvation God has given, but is everybody saved? Because you have to receive it. God is not going to force prosperity on you. God is not going to force salvation on you. God is not going to force long life on you. God has given all this. He's not going to force health on you. But you have to walk accordingly to receive it. Or move accordingly. Because I don't want to use the word work so that it don't look like you're working for the grace. God has already given you. You don't have to work for, the, for God to release the grace. But you have to go and receive this grace by moving accordingly. It teaches us to reject ungodliness. Now, <clears throat> the grace of God that God has given for salvation. This is something else I'm teaching now. And I'll try to connect it to the first one. So, let me bring you back and teach this and read this properly so that you can understand what I'm about to say now. So, pay attention. So, 11 says that the grace has appeared to all men for salvation. This grace does what? It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives. Lives with a purpose that reflects spiritual maturity in this present age. So this is what, I, that, what it is. You did not become saved because you lived right. You are living right because you got saved. After you are saved, that grace for salvation starts teaching you, the Holy Ghost starts teaching you, what? How to reject ungodly and worldly immoral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly life. You know, some people, when you talk about grace now, they, they, they return it back to works. Saying, you, you cannot say you are born again if you are still doing some things that are wrong. No, no, no. That means if you do something that's wrong, you are not born again. That means you became born again because you didn't do anything that was wrong. No, no, no. That's not how it works. You are changing the order of things. The grace appeared to all men while we were yet in sinners. He loved us and brought the grace. So when we became born again by believing Jesus as paid for our sin and confessing, that grace, the Holy Ghost, to be exact, teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives. Lives with a purpose. Let me tell you something that's really deep now. I hope you can catch it. Whether you're watching online or you're here, I hope you can catch it. Do you know that if you, if you live a purposeless life, it will, be, it will be hard for you to reject ungodly and worldly immoral desires? If you are just a Christian trying to just live away from sin, if that's all your aim, it's hard, it will be hard for you to live away from sin. Go and ask people that are trying it. There are a lot of people that are trying it. And those are the people that know how to preach and condemn choirs those years. After condemning choir and preaching, and you think that ah, this one is next to Holy Ghost, you'll be hearing different stories what they do behind closed doors. If you want to move according to this grace, right? then you must be living with a life with a purpose. Now that you're born again, what is your purpose? 
if, you're, if you have a purpose, and my purpose is to glorify God wherever I go. When you gaze your heart, your mind on glorifying God wherever you go, do you know it will be hard for you to be, to, to fall? You will be able to reject ungodly and worldly immoral desires if you are moving every day with a purpose, with a godly purpose. Put the next verse, please. Verse 13. Awaiting and confidently expecting the fulfillment of our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That means, put, put back verse 12 and let's read, let's read all together because there was no, full, I don't think there was a full stop there, there was a comma. It teaches us the grace for salvation teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives, lives with a purpose that reflects spiritual maturity in this present age, awaiting and confidently... Ex so in this present age, it teaches us how to live a good and sensible life with purpose while we are awaiting and confidently expecting the fulfillment of our blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Christ Jesus. Did you catch this whole statement? It's trying to tell you that it's a process. Did you catch it? Go back to 12 again. And please make sure you go, you move fast. It says it teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives. Lives with purpose, with a purpose that reflects spiritual maturity in this present age. Awaiting and confidently. So in this present age, is teaching us how to live. So the teaching doesn't end. So I'm saying, I'm born again already. What am I going to church for? I can serve God at home. No. You cannot serve God at home like that. You can, you can worship God at home, but you have to go to church. He said, don't neglect the guardian of the saints. Because it's a continuous teaching. If you think you have had it and I, I can never fall again, don't go to church. Don't go. And you see yourself fall. Go ask if you have tried it. It's a continuous process. That's why when you come to church, what happens when you are always fellowshipping with the believers? What happens? You are constantly reminded of which li this life that you have come into. And you keep encouraging one another to stay in the life. So it's a continuous process. The biggest, the most, whatever you call the most spiritual man of God today can fall. If he stopped being around God. Whatever you are around is what you finally become. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not. This one don't have anything to do with your belief. What you surround yourself with is what you become. There are a lot of smokers today. They're not smoking because they were born smokers. Because they were around people smoking. Someone is still here. You cannot have five friends that they are all smoking. One day you will taste it. One day you must smoke. You cannot be around five friends that are thieves. One day you will steal. One day you will. So if you want to behave right, what do you do? You be around people who are behaving the way you are supposed to behave. And one day it will rub off on you. So stop. don't stop going to church. No matter what the problem is, don't stop. Make sure you are Around, you know, I, I, I explained to a couple of people already. I said something. I said, the church is to make you serve God. The church, right, is to, we're supposed to give one another help, boosts, to keep serving God. So if you are in a church or a gathering where it's, it's so much hate and and, um, and um, envy, and so much problem, chaos, then you are there for the wrong reason. Do you catch what I, I just said? If you, are, if you are supposed to come and praise God, and iron sharpen iron, and we are all joyful, and praise God, and you give me a reason to serve God more, but, I'm, but that's not the case. That's what I came for. That's what the Bible said I should come for. But when I come... It's, we always, it's, it's always somebody is doing like this, somebody is squeezing face, somebody is not happy with me. Then, honestly speaking, just like marriage is not by force, that assembly is not by force. You go and look for an assembly where you can go and you say, wow, wonderful, this is God. Are you, are you still here? 
because it's a continuous teaching if you are supposed to go to church right so, so that you can continue staying in God and continue learning how to stay in God and continue being happy that you are with God but you go to church and it's not continuous teaching to stay in God but we are now here always settling one fight or the other always somebody said somebody did not say always then you want to reevaluate the reason why you're there or here are you are you catching it because it's a continuous teaching while we are waiting and confidently expecting the fulfillment of our blessed hope which is going to heaven if there's a continuous teaching so if the you're, you're going to church or going to the, the fellowship or gathering let's not even call the word church it's not like we're talking about churches if your reason for going has been defeated because it's now envy strife then you want to reevaluate the gathering and find another gathering where you can actually be encouraged to serve God. Thanks for watching. If you were blessed by the video you just watched, then smash the like button and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel. And turn on the notification bell for more exciting contents from Reality Meeting.